Hello again, fight fans, and happy new year. I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and with me is a man who is looking to get the breakthrough moment he has long fought for. Over his nearly 11-year career in the sport, that opportunity comes at LFA 97 on January 15th when he faces off with Nick Brown for the LFA lightweight title and likely UFC contract not far after that. And that man I speak of is well-traveled veteran Arthur Estrazu. Arthur, thank you so much for the time before this upcoming title fight. Hey, what's up, Jason? Thank you for the the opportunity here to talk a little bit about the first show of the year, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir, indeed. And, and I have so many questions for you, so I'll jump right into it now. The interesting thing about this opportunity ahead of you is while many athletes in the LFA, you know, younger fighters on the way up and stuff like that, only a few years experience, you, on the other hand, entering, like I mentioned, year 11 in this sport, have fought for major promotions like ACB, Bellator, PFL. However, those runs with those promotions were only one fight each for you. You won two of those three fights, and the one loss was a close split decision with Tiago Tavares how big like of a letdown were those situations when those promotions did not choose to bring you back offering a multi-fight deal even though you had good performances for them were there like specific reasons given for that and did it ever make you like have doubts like is MMA is this as a full-time career at the highest levels I don't know if it's gonna happen and I was now. always reaching for the opportunities whatever they say hey, you want to fight next week you want to fight the next month you want to I'm always ready to fight, mm. you know, and I think I always can do better. So I keep training and grinding. And uh, but at the same time, I always asking why they don't give me another opportunity after a, a good performance. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter if I win or lose. I'm always going to be a war. And that's something that I work a lot, especially this last year, because I have to speak for myself. No, no, I cannot wait someone to do the job for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, managers, they're going to help you for sure. But man, there's a lot of fighters, a lot of good talents. They're looking for fights. So yeah. if you don't speak for yourself, nobody will do it. So, and that's why things like that, a good interview, a good, great opportunity for me to talk. It's always a, uh, another, uh, what I can say, opportunity, right? Mm. It's an opportunity to just, uh, for me, this fight... It's the, a big chance for me to speak. I have like the five rounds to speak with hand with mm. my hands. Yeah. But at the same time, I have to learn how to speak with my voice. Uh, improving my English is another thing that I'm. Uh, it's my, I set up as I go. Going back to to, to learning English and, and practicing using English. Learning a second language is not easy, and I've heard many people say learning English is not easy. So I, I respect you so much for your English being as good as it is. How, like, what has been the process? Has it been one of the great challenges of your life to do it? Has it been something you've been doing? Because I know you didn't, you came to the, the U.S. fairly recently. Has it been something you even started doing back in Brazil? Like, what's the process for you to to learn English to pretty much make yourself that much more of a marketable star in the U.S. and and make that big money? Man, that. Is a the is an infinite process for me, you know. Every <laughs> time I think my English is good, I say like, man, you have to work more on that, you know. But uh, I think the first reason for me was when I moved to here mm. was like, man, if I want to live here, I want to learn the language, yeah, right. I want to be able to speak. In the beginning, it was so hard, like to break this, you know, like this. Sometimes you feel shy, you know, to 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 speak. Yeah. Like right now, man. I know. I know. I'm not using the right way to, to talk, but at least I, you can understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, you're very good. That's important for me. Uh, studying is hard, you know. I think if, if I was a good guy, like, if I can study more, it would be much easier. Mm. But if I could study more, I'm probably not going to be fighting, you know. I would be like <laughs> a scientist or something. <laughs> but I, what I try to do more is conversation, mm. you know try to speak to things different than MMA because I don't want to just be a guy who can talk about yes. techniques, you know, I want to yep. be able to uh, talk about everything. So listen like podcasts, like Joe Rogan is a guy who like can talk about everything. He's a guy like <laughs> listen a lot. Yeah. And sometimes try to read because man, it's it's crazy, you know, when I moved to here was my first time uh, out from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh I came straight to California, and here in California is not U.S. You go here, you meet people from everywhere. Mm. And then I was like, man, 
I need to learn more about other languages, not just English, man. I want to learn Spanish. I want to learn Chinese, Japanese. I know I'm not going to be able in this life to learn <laughs> that much. I'm not that smart. I'm using my, my momentum to learn more, independent if it's English or Spanish. You know, my, my girl here, come here, Sabi. You know Sabina for sure. Mm -hmm. Sabina Mazo. Hello. Uh, Hello. So she, she teaches me a little bit of Spanish too. And... Uh, and it's all about learning, right? Yeah, totally agree. Now, as a well-traveled fighter, how do you view competing for the vacated LFA title? Is this like a title that you have had a lot of respect for or hoping to one day get to, to compete for? Would look like, treasure it in the shared trophy case you have you and Sabina have? Or do you view it as that like that golden ticket? It's the golden key to join her in the UFC. Right, good, man. It's uh, actually in the beginning... I since I moved to here, my goal, is go, my goal was always fighting the UFC. Mm. I never think much about it. I've been in uh, many fights of her for LFA in the title shot as well. And I never give much attention for that. I was like, no, I want to get any fight to go through the UFC. But years passed, man, and I start seeing them. Man, there's so many good shows. And I have to give the credit to these guys, man. Man, LFA, Ed Soares, man, I, man, I love that guy. Man. The way he, <laughs> he created a show who prepare you to be in the UFC. So why I want to jump straight to that, like begging them to ah, give me a fight, give me a contract? No, man, I want to prove that I belong to that. And that's the best way. Look at that, man. First time I, I could have fight more than once in the same show. Now I have the chance to fight for the belt against a good opponent. You know? And... I really want that belt. I want to put that in my wall. You know, my girl has one. Why not me? Right? And, uh... Now, this is for both of you. How? Because it's not all the time you have company, uh, couples that are both doing MMA at the same time or just in any industry at the same time and to get to talk to them at the same time. How much ha has it been beneficial to have this kind of unique relationship and that the understanding of, look, it's my fight camp. It's kind of my time. Like, we need to sacrifice and do those kind of things. And both of you, please answer. Like, how, how, it has, how helpful has it been and, and, and how pain in the ass is it sometimes <laughs> having to live with a fighter weight cutting all those kind of things uh, actually i think it's it's easier because we can solve things or through the love or through the fight right in a good way <laughs> but uh no, just a joke man for me it's a pleasure to be around her because even before i was dating her i respect her mm. you know because she came here young you know and she worked hard every day you know, she was the lioness between the lions at King's MMA, mm. you know, and I have so much respect for her, even before I started dating her, you know, and actually was, was kind of, we took really slow on that, you know, because we always uh, put our career first, mm. me and her, like, hey, I don't want to date nobody, I just want to <laughs> talk about fight, and the truth is, man. That's the best thing I can do. We have a mat at our home, you know. We can just wake up, stretch each other, you know, train, talk about fight, sometimes, like, chill. Uh, yeah, and I, and I feel like when you were saying about um, training camps or stuff, I feel like it really doesn't matter the timing. You know, there's sometimes where I fight and he doesn't have a fight. Or, for example, in this case, that he's fighting January 15 and mm -hmm. then I'm fighting... February 27th so mm. it's short time you know so yeah. it doesn't matter really if we have a training camp or not I feel like we're always like helping each other it doesn't matter if we do have a fight schedule or not because anything can happen you know it can be canceled a fight or we can get more opportunities he can fight a week after his fight you mm. know so but I do feel like we 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 can you know kind of use each other you know for 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 our ourselves for our improvement for our goals and and that in those goals of course it's fighting now going to your fight with with nick how do you see this fight playing out do you feel it could be one of those weird situations where you got two really good grapplers and that grappling cancels out and it's a stand-up fight in an interview you know he did with combat press he was very confident about how the fight could go on the feet feeling he could maybe knock you out there well how do you see this fight playing out i like that man <laughs> yeah, no it's good man because so the fight was canceled, right? But we had the opportunity to see each other. Right. You know? And uh, 
and I like the first impression, you know, because I know he's training hard. I know he has faith on his his work, mm. and then that's what I want to see, you know. It's a test of faith for both sides, you know. I think I, I have a, a little bit more experience than him, but that doesn't mean that he's going to come because he knows it's his opportunity too. But I just feel ready, man, to do it whatever happens in the fight. We're going to, for sure, fight start standing. Mm -hmm. We're going to strike, you know. Man, whatever happens there, I think you're both gonna gonna give everything, leave everything in the cage, you know. Uh, it's just, man, I think everyone should watch the fight. <laughs> in January, it's gonna be a war, wherever it goes, man. About the, the the grappling, I don't think I don't think we're gonna cancel each other because both of us we're gonna fight to finish the fight. Mm. So. You know, that there's not, not a moment that you're going to be like, oh, I, I want to just hold him or be afraid. You know, the, the fact, as soon as the, 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 the belt starts, I think you're going to try to kill each other, you know. And that's it, man. It's just going to be a great match, you know. I'm, I'm a, I think I'm, a, I can, a, a, you, if you watch my fights, you can see how I can, go to wherever the fight goes, you know, if you want to strike, if you can almost knock me out, they're going to keep you looking to you and laughing like, man, let's do it, you know, <laughs> and grappling, same thing, man, I, I always going to find an opportunity to try finish the fight, you know, mm. yeah, it's so dynamic, the fight, and I think he's a good match for me, and uh, I'm not saying like, oh, because I'm going to, I always think I'm going to win the fight, man, come on, I'm not going to step there, I think I'm going to lose, but... For people who's gonna wanna watch like a, a show, that's a great match. Cause like you were talking about my fight on PFL that I lose. Mm -hmm. That fight I feel a little bit sick after. Not because I lose, but the way I lost. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I tell the guy, I tell that Thiago Tavares he he did enough and he just stopped fighting in the end. You know, mm -hmm. and I and I, I understand, man. You have to play the game. Yeah. But that makes me feel like so, uh, you know. <laughs> But it's always a less. Now, going to the grappling, and I'm glad you brought up, both of you guys are, are black belts, BJJ. You know, you have won most of your fights by submission, and your eight submission wins have all come by two very specific submissions, a rear naked choke, triangle choke. I'm sure Nick will think, oh, you know, if I stay away from those kind of positions, I'll be fine, stuff like that. Would it be foolish to have that sort of strategy and things are for, far more complicated than that on the ground with you? Definitely, man. Definitely, because to be honest, no of these fights I was trying to grapple. You know, mm. just happened. You know, yeah. natural. And uh, like I say, I always gonna look for the finish. You know. And when I say finish, I'm not just talking about submission, man. If you if you leave your face open, I'm gonna throw elbows in your face. I'm gonna be mean, man. Mm. Because I only wish for my opponent the same thing that I know that he can do on me. So, man, it's a fair fight. We know the rules. I'm gonna use all the things to finish the fight. You know, I'm not gonna be dirty on you, but man, I'm gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> now going back, it's fair, right? yeah. I know he can do the same. Yeah. Now going back to to not getting more chances with big promotions, like we talked about, everyone knows how winning LFA gold or even just being in a title fight can lead to a UFC deal. Does that? add an extra weight to this fight for you is this by far like the biggest fight of your life do you do you feel like you need to win this and finally land that eventual ufc contract you have fought so freaking long for and that you know like a law like it's an added weight like a loss could feel like a real setback and it also for sabina do you feel a pressure like because you really want him to join you in the ufc where you feel he deserves to be you want to answer first yeah i mean <laughs> yeah i i honestly what I what I feel about the fight and stuff. I don't think it's a weight, you know. It's it's just a natural. It's gonna come, you know. It's gonna mm. be a kind of a prize about it, you know. But uh, I don't know. What I see in Arthur is that uh, every fight is important, you know. Every fight he put the focus on it. Of course, the opportunity is on the future, but he will focus on it. Mm. And um, and it's just a matter of time, you know, for for the for their things to be in the right place and he be where he belongs but i feel like this is where he belongs he 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 belongs to get this belt and um 
and naturally the other consequences will come you know but i don't feel this is like an extra pressure mm. or like weight on it you know it's uh it's a simple fact of life so if you want to take it as weight it's just each one can can do it or not yeah i i just think man if you don't like pressure you're in the wrong game <laughs> right man you're gonna you're gonna step in the cage and the other guy's trying to kill you man. Mm-hmm. so man. so every fight is really important for sure you know? but and at the same time you have to know about the facts it's true i really think after this fight they're gonna get my contract mm-hmm. and that's really important for me as well you know in my career but man winning or lose you know I'm not gonna stop to fight, so I always gonna. I still reach, try to reach my goal, man. Mm. Like when I lost in the RFA, I thought after that fight I could get the, the contract. Like my opponent, the Gagos, is in the UFC now. Mm. Uh, and man, sport is not fair. You know, I, we are just talking about them, and you go to the guys who go to Olympics. Mm-hmm. And they go to Olympics, and then they get the silver medal. Everyone like, ah, you terrible, man. Even if you don't get any medal, man, in the Olympics, you 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 you're definitely a good, a good yeah. you're a good athlete, yeah. right? But we can complain. It's it, sports like them. They always gonna you win. They are gonna raise your hand. People gonna like you. You lose. Everyone gonna talk shit about you. And if you're not <laughs> ready for this kind of pressure, man, don't play the game. 